evening and welcome to In Focus. I'm Kelly Spook. Secretary of Education didn't get the job without a fight. Betsy DeVos was sworn in after a contentious debate in the Senate, and it actually took a vote from the vice president to break a tie. Now, during the campaign, President Trump discussed a $20 billion plan to expand school choice. And education experts say with Betsy, they are in the position now. It's only a matter of time before Trump's administration puts forth a proposal. So what is expanding school choice and what does it mean for our education system? We got an expert in the studio, a native, David Kim. David is the founder of the C2 Education A Tutoring and Tress Test Prep Company. First location in Timonium, but several of them now. That's okay. right. All right. What was your reaction to her being sworn in? Well, I mean, there's a lot of issues with kind of school choice. I think on paper, uh, it sounds great, right? Being able to have the option to, you know, buy whatever car you want, whatever clothes you like, being able to send your child to whatever school, uh, in theory, uh, increases the competition within those school districts and tries to weed out the underperforming schools. In reality, though, you know, the amount of dollars that are available for these schools is limited, mm -hmm. and so you're really sharing, you know, a very small pie with more schools and thus probably resulting in greater school failures. And so. You know, those are some of the comments and concerns um, you know, that a lot of educators have, having seen you know, si you know, similar ex experiments that Mr. Voss has supported, whether it's in Michigan or other states, um, you know, fail as a result of a lack of oversight and you know, um, spreading out the amount of funds uh, too thinly. What's the concern that how, th how this could impact public schools? Well, the concern is that you'll have uh, a flight of students out of the public schools uh, to, you know, for-profit charter schools or some of the parochial schools that are available today, uh, resulting in less funding uh, at some of these public schools that are already in desperate need of more funding. Mm -hmm. And for folks who say, well, this gives people who can't afford a private school an opportunity to get a chance at a better school, what do you say to those folks? Yeah, so, I mean, the issue is, you know, are we going to be providing enough money to each of these schools to really provide a quality education? Uh, you know, some of the charter schools that were opened uh, have proven to be not as effective because of a lack of oversight. And so I think the big concern that a lot of folks have is that we can't just willy-nilly reallocate dollars that are going to the existing public schools uh, to new charter schools uh, without making sure that the level of competency and the quality at these schools are, are above par where they are today. A lot of folks are really scared about what this could mean for public schools. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Concerned that maybe they could become a wasteland for people who don't have the resources or finances to send their kids to private schools. That's correct. I mean, you know, in terms of kind of the schooling system, I mean, it's, it's a complex issue uh, where, you know, you have uh, families that are either in the inner cities or in the rural areas um, that, that are, have, have a lower income where, you know, things like jobs, transportation, uh, and safety uh, are also big concerns, you know, as part of making sure that these school districts improve. And so um, they can absolutely become, uh, you know, a bigger blight on the cities uh, as money is, is transferred out of these areas. Among them, Baltimore City, quite possibly. Absolutely. All right. David Kim, thank you so much thank for you. coming in and sharing your insight with us.